Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on one tailed binomial distribution hypothesis test on the FX CG50. So we're going to complete a hypothesis test using the binomial distribution to help us answer this question. So a coin is suspected of being biased towards tails. The coin is tossed 15 times and 12 tails are thrown. Test at the 5% significance level if the coin is biased. So before we use the FXCG50, we just need to define some things from this question that we're going to be using. So first off is P, which is the population parameter. That's going to be the probability of a tail from a coin toss. And we're going to use that to set up our null and our alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis, H0, is going to be that P equals 0 0.5. Now, where does this come from? This comes from imagining that the coin is fair You've got two different choices there, heads or tails. They've each got a 0.5 probability of occurring. So we're going to initially assume that the coin is fair and not biased. And so therefore the probability of getting a tail will be 0.5. Our alternative hypothesis, which is H1, and it's sometimes labelled as HA. Well, we just need to have a look at the first sentence in the question here a coin is suspected of being biased towards tails now that would suggest that we have a higher probability of getting a tails than heads so the way that we would write the alternative hypothesis here is that p is greater than 0.5 we're expecting there to be a higher probability than 0.5 of achieving a tails because it's suggesting it's biased towards tails and this is what will give us the one tail test. We're interested in the upper tail, it being greater than 0.5. So that will define that we've got a one tail test that we're going to be doing here. And our significance level, which is usually represented by the letter alpha, is going to be 5% for this particular question, or 0 0.05 is the decimal equivalent that we will be comparing it against. Let's just define our distribution as well. So our distribution is going to be binomial. Well, why binomial? Because we're thinking about tossing a coin. We're either going to get a tail or we're not going to get a tail. So that's a success or fail situation. Each throw of the coin is going to be independent uh, from one another. And we've got a set number of times that we're tossing it as well. We're tossing it 15 times, a set number of trials, so we can model this binomially. X is going to be distributed binomially with an N of 15, that's the number of trials, and a P of 0.5, that comes from a null hypothesis. And X being, in this case, the number of tails that we're going to get from 15 tosses. So now that we've got all that set up, we can now use the calculator to find out a critical value that we'll need to compare against the 5% significance level. So we're going to need statistics mode for this. So navigate to statistics or press two. And we want F5 for distribution. And then we want F5 again for binomial. Now we've got a choice here. And again, we need to just refer back to the question to decide which one of these we're going to be using because we've got three possible choices here. Binomial probability distribution, binomial cumulative distribution, and inverse binomial. So it says the coin is tossed 15 times and 12 tails are thrown. So 12 is going to be the X value that we're going to input, but we've got to consider the possibility that we could have also got more extreme results than 12. So we could have got 13 tails or 14 tails, or 15 tails. So we need to think about the accumulation of those results. So it's going to be the cumulative distribution that we're going to be using to answer this question. So it's going to be F2 from the choices here. Okay, so we've got lots of different things to fill in on this page. The first thing we want to do is to just change it from a list because we want to use the variable at this stage. So just press F2 for the data line we want that to be variable. And notice how that's changed the next two categories to lower and upper. Now, because we're dealing with an upper tail, our lower limit is going to be our X value. So that is the number of tails that we achieved. So that's going to be 12 in this instance. So input that as 12. 
and the upper will be the maximum number of tails that we could have achieved while we threw the coin 15 times so it's going to be 15 so it should match our n value so our upper is 15 and as just stated there the number of trials is 15 that's our n value and then the p well our p is 0.5 and again that's coming from our null hypothesis so press execute and we're not concerned about saving the result at this point so execute once more and here we have our critical value, so 0 0.017578. Now we're going to use that to compare that against the 5% significance level. So let's think about that as being a percentage, so multiply by 100. Well, that's going to be 1.76% approximately, about 1.8%. And if we compare that to 5%, well, it's less than 5%. What this is saying is it's much less likely to occur than we would have expected it to be. And so therefore that suggests that the coin might be biased, that it's not a fair coin and that 0.5 isn't the appropriate probability for getting a tails on this particular coin. So therefore what we're going to do as 1.76% is less than 5% is we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to reject H0 at the 5% level in favour of the null hypothesis, which says that P is greater than 0.5. There is a greater than 50% chance of achieving a tail on this particular coin. Now, the significance level does play a very important role here. One other significance level that you may have to use is the 1% significance level, so comparing results against 1%. And in that particular case, 1.76% is actually greater than 1%. So if we were testing at the 1% level, we would not reject H0 and we would we would accept that that's true. So you've just got to be careful with your significance level that you're using the right figures to compare it against. At 5%, there is enough evidence to reject H0, but if it was 1%, we wouldn't be as sure that it is biased, so therefore we would have to accept H0 but the question was for 5% and so therefore we would have to reject H0 in this case. So there we go using the FX CG50 the actual calculations are relatively simple but a lot of this is about the preparation really making sure that you extract all the information that you need from the question when it's given ensuring that you're comparing against the correct significance level there the CG50 makes the actual calculations very easy to get your critical value. So in this case, 0.0176, about 1.8%, and then being able to compare it against that. Well, that's it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.